Good morning. I welcome you as we gather on this seventh Sunday of Epiphany. I welcome those who may be worshiping with us for the first time, both here in the sanctuary and online. I also want to thank Patrick Clerken, who is serving as our tech person this morning. Just a reminder that the middle hymn is one that is new. It's the power of your love. There are sheets with the music and notes on it for those who would like to have them for learning the piece. And uh, if you raise your hand during the uh, first hymn, the ushers will bring a copy to you. And I know that uh, our Minister of Discipleship has an announcement. Good morning. Good morning. I just wanted to remind you that invitations for Bible Quest and Bible Sunday have gone out, and the RSVP date for that is this coming Monday, not tomorrow, a week from tomorrow, um, so that we can make sure that we have the Bibles inscribed with the name spelled correctly in the date, and that we have all of our materials ready for Bible Quest. So if you have a third grader or older who does not have a Bible and would like to participate, please let me know. Thank you. I know that Don Putney has an announcement as well. Good morning. Good morning. I know that normally a ministry meeting is not something of a big announcement for the whole congregation. We are having a meeting at 11.15 after church, and the reason why it should be of interest to you is Gail and I have been working very hard, and there are some exciting things for the church. If you thought uh, Trunk or Treat was exciting, come and listen just out of curiosity. You don't have to be a member, but if you want to know what's going on, join us. What ministry? <laughs> this is the inReach ministry at this time. I noticed it too, Lauren. I've been asked on behalf of the fair ministry to remind everyone that there is going to be a drawing for a week's stay at a uh, nice place up in, I believe it's York Beach, Maine, thanks uh, to uh, Laura Kaplan. And uh, the link to purchase your tickets uh, for this drawing is in the Hilltop News, and the drawing is going to be on March 6th. I believe that there's only 50 tickets that are being sold, so uh, there will be a good opportunity to have an op a week away in uh, York Beach. The outreach. I'm not on. Hold on. You can. Okay. I'll do some exploring during the first hymn. The outreach ministry is holding its annual diaper drive during the month of March. They are collecting diapers, baby formula baby food and other items. There's a full list in the Hilltop News, and these donated items will be taken to neighbors in need up in Lawrence, and we will have the box, as I say, available for your donations. Also, a week from this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and that is the start of Lent, and that means that it's time to make the lobster bisque again. Uh, we will be doing takeout only again this year. Hopefully this will be the last year where we have to limit it to that. There will be a link in the Hilltop News for all of you to place your orders, and please uh, spread the word. Are there any other announcements? If not, then let us draw near to God's throne that we might Rejoice in the love that is from everlasting to everlasting and is with us even now.
please join me in the call to worship. Sometimes worship is like a parade. A celebration as people come together to share their joy. Sometimes worship is like an adventure. A gathering of people who are searching for wisdom and understanding. Sometimes worship is like a fast. With the broken hearted share their tears in search of grace to heal their wounds. Worship is a sacred encounter of all that is human with all that is holy. A sacred drama full of ancient promises and joyful possibilities. Come let us rejoice in the wonders of our God who is with us even now. Join me in the prayer of invocation. God of every living thing, you know me inside and out. Every thought that flitters through my mind, every plan that I make, every word that I speak, you know my past and you know my future. You even knew me when I was being wonderfully wrought in the depths of my mother's womb. Come to me now, wise and wonderful God, to dance with me in my joy and hold me in my sadness. Comfort me with your grace and challenge me with your truth that I may be faithful in all of my living. For I ask it in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
be seated. As we continue to praise the God who was and is and ever shall be and give thanks for all of the blessings that we receive, let us come now to God's altar with our tithes and our offerings. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Holy One, as we stand before your altar, we praise you and give you thanks for the miracle of life and the promise of the life that shall be everlasting. So it is with humble and joyful hearts that we bring you this offering and ask that you bless it and us as we seek to do your work. This we pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who was and is the light of the world. Amen. So I welcome the boys and girls this morning, and in the bag here, I have a number of things that you might use if you're feeling sick, if you're not feeling well. So for example, there are different ways that we don't feel well. For example, if we fall down and we get a cut, we'll need some band-aids to cover the cut. And if you feel like you have a temperature, you need one of these new contraptions. You just put it on your forehead and go like that, and okay. If you have an upset stomach, you ever have an upset stomach, not feel kind of right, you might take some Pepto-Bismol. And if your shovel after a big storm, you might take some Tylenol for the aches and the pains. And a number of years ago, when I fell out here in the parking lot and I broke my fibula, I had to use a walking boot like this. And so these are all things that you would use when you're hurting. But there's another kind of hurt that is very important and Jesus was very concerned about, and that's the kind of hurt that you feel inside when you're sad. Sometimes it's because something happens, maybe a friend has to move away to another part of the country and you have to say goodbye. There's also hurts when somebody says or does something mean to you and it makes you very sad and you cry. And Jesus doesn't want us to hurt each other like that. And so he gave us a rule. 
And it's a very important rule. It's called the golden rule. It's called the golden rule because it's very valuable and it's very important. And the golden rule goes like this. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. So what Jesus is saying there is if you wouldn't like it if somebody did it to you, then he doesn't want you to do it to someone else. And when we live our lives by the golden rule, it'll bring us happiness and it'll bring more happiness into the world. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus and for how really wise he was. We thank you that he shared the golden rule with us. We ask you to help us to live by that golden rule and to always remember before we say or do something to ask ourselves, would I like it if somebody did this to me? And if the answer is no, help us not to do it to others. Amen. Please be seated. Please join me in the responsive call to prayer. Draw near to God and God will draw near to you. My sisters and brothers, let us enter into this time now of sacred stillness.
My sisters and brothers, are there prayers that you would like to lift up this day to the Lord? Yes, Andy. Uh, Dean Cunell's grandson, Freddie, has been given a totally clean bill of health. No cancer is coming back. He no longer needs drugs. So. Yeah. so that is wonderful news to celebrate, absolutely. <laughs> little, little Freddie, as many of you know, was diagnosed with a rare childhood leukemia. He underwent a... Uh, can't remember if it was a bone marrow or a um, stem cell transplant, but uh, it went very well, and he has now been given a clean bill of health. And we give thanks to God for that wonderful news. Lord, in your goodness. Yes, Gail. So we lift up Gail Poplaski's friend Darlene, who is undergoing treatments for her breast cancer. We ask that God's strength and healing and grace be upon her. Lord, in your goodness. Also lift up in prayer Janet Dukeshire, who is home recovering from a broken rib after she had a fall. And uh, we lift up also David Baker, who is here this morning. I believe you broke your wrist. Yep, you definitely broke your wrist. We ask God's healing upon them. Lord, in your goodness, lift up in prayer Arlene Garlington. She is now receiving hospice care. Uh, she has been living with dementia for a number of years. And I saw her this past week. Uh, one of the things that uh, does bring her some joy is cards, and so information on sending her cards will be in the Hilltop News. We ask that God's spirit be upon Arlene and also her husband, Chuck, as they walk this path together. Lord, in your goodness. We lift up in prayer as well Bob Mascola. He is home. It turns out that he had an ulcer on his esophagus, and he is now being treated for that. We ask God's healing to be upon him. Lord, in your goodness. Also, we lift up Billy Hayes. I had a conversation with his mother, Sandy. He is down in Florida. As you know, we've been including him in his uh, prayers as he's undergoing chemo treatments for a rare form of cancer. Those treatments have ended. Uh, he will be undergoing some tests, and there are uh, signs of cautious optimism, and the hope is that he will be able to undergo a stem cell transplant. We pray that that will be the case. Lord, in your goodness, let us pray. Lord God, we come this day to praise you for this truly is the day that you have made. And we are here to rejoice and be glad in it. We come to give you thanks, for truly we know that with every beat of our heart, we are celebrating the gift of life that comes from you. We give you thanks, Lord, for this community of faith, where we gather to love one another, even as you loved us when you came to dwell among us in your only begotten Son. Lord God, in this time of great challenges, we ask that your Spirit be upon us, and even more so, that you still our hearts, that we can feel your presence with us, and that it will inspire us to rise up and to, in all ways, be instruments of your peace and ambassadors of your love. Help us carry the joy and the blessings that we feel and receive every week when we gather here, to carry them into the world around us so that we, in some way, might make the life of someone a little better. Holy One, you have heard the prayers of our hearts, both those that we have spoken and those that are 
still silent. We give you thanks. We pray all of this in the name of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke and begins in the sixth chapter with the 27th verse. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you, and from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful even as your Father is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Here ends the reading of the word. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts upon the scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and always our Redeemer. Amen. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. It's called the golden rule, and it is how Jesus wants you and me to live our lives. Yes, do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Unfortunately, it can be difficult to do that when there are people who live their lives as if they had never heard of the golden rule. I saw that a couple of years ago when I was living in the parsonage next door. Actually, it would be more accurate to say that I heard it when I was living in the parsonage next door. Over the course of an entire summer, I heard it every Friday and Saturday night between midnight and 1 a.m., when someone on a motorcycle revved his engine as he was heading up Haverhill Street every Friday and Saturday night. 
between midnight and 1 a.m. I can't tell you how irritating that was. And apparently, the guy on the motorcycle didn't care that he was disturbing people who were trying to sleep. You don't have to look very far these days to see behavior like that. One man saw it when he went camping with a friend. One morning, the two of them were sitting around the campfire when they suddenly looked up and saw this big old grizzly bear charging toward them. Immediately, the man's friend reached down and began to put his boots on. What are you doing, the man said. You can't outrun that big old grizzly bear. I know that, the friend said, but I don't have to outrun that big old grizzly bear. All I have to do is outrun you. Here's another example. Many of you have probably heard about the truck drivers up in Canada who are participating in a self-described freedom convoy. They're protesting, or they were protesting, a mandate in that country that all truck drivers needed to be vaccinated because they went back and forth between this country and their country. And they had every right to protest, of course, but here's a question for you. Did they have the right to park their trucks on the Ambassador Bridge and block traffic going back and forth between Canada and the United States. Because of their actions, there were businesses that had to close, which means that there were people who didn't get paid because they couldn't work or they couldn't get to work. It makes you wonder, how would those truck drivers feel if, say, people who were in favor of the mandate blocked the bridge? How would the truck drivers feel if they had to go without a paycheck because they couldn't get to their destinations and make their deliveries? Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. It's a great rule, but it can be difficult to follow because you and I both know that there are people who do not live their lives the way the golden rule says that they should live their lives. So it can be difficult to follow the golden rule, but not impossible. All you have to do is look at Roberto Di Vincenzo and what he did. Roberto Di Vincenzo was a professional golfer from Argentina. I asked Horatio if he had heard of him, and he didn't. Neither had I. But he played on the PGA Tour in the 1950s and 60s. Since I had never heard of him, I went to Wikipedia, and I discovered that he actually won eight PGA tournaments, including the British Open in 1967. Well, after he won one of those tournaments, he was at the golf club when a woman came to him with a tale of woe. She told him that she had a sick child and she couldn't afford to pay the medical bills. Well, her story touched the golfer's heart and he gave her a significant amount of money. A little while later, a PGA official went to Di Vincenzo and told her that the woman was a con artist. She's a phony, he said. There is no sick child. She fleeced you, my friend. When Di Vincenzo heard that, he couldn't believe it. You mean, he said, there is no dying child? That's right, the official replied. At that point, Di Vincenzo nodded his head and said, that's the best news I've heard all week. Great story. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. It means that 
If you're serious about following the golden rule, you have to forgive when someone takes advantage of you. It means you have to love someone who hates you. It means you have to turn the other cheek when someone insults you. So let's not kid ourselves here. There are times when it can be hard to live the golden rule. It can feel sometimes like it's a burden, but it can be a blessing. Maybe that's why I found myself thinking the other day about Lillian Weeks. Mrs. Weeks was my piano teacher when I was growing up. And I have to confess that I wasn't a great student when it came to practicing my piano lesson each week. I really wanted to learn how to play the piano, but I hated it when I had to sit down at the piano and practice my lesson. My mother, God bless her, she did everything she could think of to make me practice. One of the things she did was she took an egg timer and she set it for 30 minutes. That's how long I had to sit at the piano and practice my lesson. My mother made a big mistake though. Instead of keeping the egg timer with her in the kitchen, she put it on the piano. So my daily challenge was to see how far I could advance the timer without her catching on to my little scheme. I think I got away with it for about a week. Yes, I hated it when I had to sit down and practice my piano lesson. But then years later, when I was out on my own for the first time, you know what I did? I went out and I bought a piano. Now I love to sit down and play the piano and my only complaint is that I never seem to have the time to do it. So for me, playing the piano went from being a burden to being a blessing. And the same thing can happen when it comes to the golden rule. It can go from being a burden at times to being a blessing all the time. The key is to remember what Jesus said at the very end of this morning's reading. Actually, it's the verse after the ending of this morning's reading. I didn't realize that I gave Gail the reading without the last verse. But this is what Jesus said. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. In other words, what you give is what you'll get back. If you are kind and compassionate and caring, that's what will come back to you. If you're good-hearted and generous, that's what will come back to you. If you're friendly and forgiving, that is what will come back to you. Now, it may not happen every single time, and it may not happen the very next day, but overall, what you give is what you'll get back. The measure you give is the measure you will receive. Do you all remember the movie, It's a Wonderful Life? great movie. I have to confess, I had never seen it until a few years ago. Now I watch it every Christmas. In the movie, you'll remember that George Bailey was always helping others. When he was a boy, he helped Old Man Gower. Old Man Gower was the pharmacist at the drugstore, and when he finds out that his son has been killed in the Second World War, in his state of mind, he mixes up some medication for an elderly woman who has rheumatism. George Bailey realized that and he corrected the problem before it could have done serious harm to the woman. 
Later on, when he got older, he continued to help people. He helped Violet Bick. Do you remember her? Violet Bick got in some sort of trouble and needed money. George Bailey helped her out. Mr. Mancini, remember Mr. Mancini? George Bailey helped him buy a house for himself and his family. So throughout the movie, George Bailey is there for others. He's helping others time and time again. And then at the very end of the movie, when George Bailey is in trouble and he needs $8,000 because of a problem which was not any of his doing, all the people that he helped come back on Christmas Eve and together they raise the money that George Bailey needs and then some. The measure you give is the measure you will get back. It may not happen every single time, and it might not happen the very next day. But the measure you give is the measure that you get back. Jesus knew that, and that's why he made that promise. He was able to make the promise because he knew that God is the one who is always doing the measuring. Mark Medoff saw that a number of years ago. Mark Medoff is a writer who wrote the screenplay for another movie that might not be as familiar to you. The movie was Children of a Lesser God. And it's about a deaf woman who has a relationship with a hearing teacher at a school for the deaf. Marlene Maitland played the role of the deaf student. And she actually won uh, the 1986 Oscar for Best Actress. Well, because of the movie, Mark Medoff was invited back to his high school to speak to some students in a drama class. So he went back to Miami Beach High School. And after his presentation, he asked the teacher of that class if any of his old English teachers were still there at the school. Turns out there was one an elderly woman by the name of Irene Roberts. So after a short walk down the hallway, Mark Medoff found himself standing in the hallway with Miss Roberts. Looking back, he wrote these words. I was no one special in Miss Roberts' class, just another jock who did okay work. I don't recall any one special bit of wisdom she passed on, yet I cannot forget her respect for language, for ideas, and for her students. When he stood, met her, he said, I'm Mark Medoff. You were my 12th grade English teacher in 1958. She didn't recognize him. So in that awkward moment, the only thing he was able to say was, I want you to know you were important to me. And there in the hallway, this slight and lovely woman, now nearing retirement age, this teacher who doesn't remember me, begins to weep. And she encircles me in her arms. And through her tears, whispers against my cheek, thank you. And then, with the briefest of looks into my forgotten face, she disappears back into her classroom, returns to what she's done thousands of days through all the years of my absence. Good people, remember, the measure you give is the measure you will get back. And when you remember that, you will have no trouble measuring up to the golden rule. Amen.
People of God, our service of worship has ended. Let us prepare now to go forth wherever we may be to continue our service of love, knowing that our God goes before us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Creator Christ and Holy Spirit, be upon you all. Amen. friend.